what? Father? Valley of the Dead. If you're looking for a weekend watch on Netflix with war and zombies, look no further, because Valley of the Dead, directed by Javier Ruiz Caldera, checks all the boxes. The film is set during the Spanish Civil War, which immediately translates to conflict and politics. However, this film takes it a step further by introducing some ruthless zombies in it. It was set to release in 2020, but due to the pandemic, its release was pushed to 2022. And with some great moments, a very talented and Hungry Zombies. This film has our screens, finally. The story tends to switch between the two genres, zombies and war, but makes for an interesting watch nonetheless. The Valley of the Dead is based on the novel Noche de Defuntos del Trienta y Ocho, or The Night of the Dead of 38, by Manuel Martin, and also has a video game based on it. Here is everything you need to know about the film. Let's begin, shall we? But before we go into our explanation, we have a very small request. If you like our content, please support us by subscribing to our channel. This is a small click for you, but for us, it means a lot. Thank you. Let's begin. Thrilling plot. The film begins with the ringing of the church bells, as we see families getting together and having their meals as the bride, groom and their family pose for a picture. However, this is interrupted when a car, followed by German troops, enters the scene and silence engulfs the entire area. As the general steps out of the car, the little kid runs up to him, offering him a glass of water. A sip and coughing up the water results in snickers and laughs from everyone. And the next thing we know, one command later, they're all shot dead. Not one person has been spared, not even the children, as the title appears on the screen. The scene shifts to a young man being blindfolded, joking away until he hears the guns cock, as he lets the troops know that he is General Lozano's nephew, and that this is all a misunderstanding. So Good enough, right as the troops aim to shoot him, his uncle intervenes, saving him from getting shot, as they then proceed to sit down for a drink. The general explains that this is the third and last time that he will save his life, but it has come at a price. Yon, the young man, must now deliver an envelope to Colonel Alarcos, who commands the 6th on the other side of the Sierra. We learn a little more about Yon, who holds the title of captain, and now his father was dead. But he still had a brother alive somewhere, and Yon was also being sentenced for treason, along with several people wanting him executed. Family to this war. Let me remind you, my brother's still alive. Despite all this, he continued to remain cocky with his cynical jokes and sense of humor. Private de Cruz, a young soldier, and Yon prepare to make their way to the sixth knowing that there is almost no chance that they will make it back alive. De Cruz makes sure he drives a little slower, hoping that means that they stay alive a little longer. But Yon seems unfazed by the impending doom that might follow and even manages to catch a little nap on the way. They are stopped by German troops on their way, who after a little riff let them pass. However, there are more hurdles on their way, one of them being the Francoist forces, who could have killed them for crossing into their territory, but don't. Although they do seize their weapons, along with a letter that Yon was carrying, hoping to deliver it to the sixth. It is revealed that the letter reads, a war is won by having balls, and nothing else. They continue moving forward, along with Yon and de Cruz, until they encounter a man with a wound on his neck, as he rushes to bite them. But Brodsky is quick to snap his neck as he falls to the ground and shoots him. As they return to their base, they realize that everything and everyone has been destroyed and is up in flames. However, the night Nightmare begins when all the seemingly dead bodies start to come to life, and they look like they have been starving for years. Three of them manage to feed on one of the members, and that's when they all begin shooting the undead, who are now presumed to be zombies. It doesn't matter if they are all on the same side, they must shoot them in the head to make it out alive. They manage to escape on a boat, and that's when the plot moves forward. As they reach some land and prepare to make their way to their camp, where they have more weapons and food, Unexpectedly, they encounter more zombies, and this is when they all come together to try and fight the zombies off, but they lost Brodsky in the process, and he is mauled by the zombies. After they escape, they find a small hiding place where they encounter a nun, Sister Flor, along with Lieutenant Jurel and Private Kafir. The tension between all of them can't go unseen, and they soon seem to realize that their only chance of surviving is if they stick together, instead of turning against each other. And finally, 
Finally, they sit down to eat together and describe their experiences and encounters with the zombies and how none of this is earthly. When there is no room in hell, the dead will walk the earth. The entire conversation between them turns religious, as some call it the doomsday, while Sister Floor defends that this is far from it. As the night goes by, the different groups try to put their differences aside, try to converse with each other, even if it means not being able to bond and simply be civil with each other in the midst of war, zombies and chaos. Yon is ready to burn the letter and light a cigarette, but that's when he realizes that it had a hidden message with a map on it. We cut to the only woman of the group, who is called priest killer and Yon and she have visible romantic tension between them although their mutual hatred overpowers their cocky remarks and subtle flirting. Eventually they hear a dog whine from a distance and see a zombie approach their hideaway spot and although they manage to shoot one from a distance plenty more emerge from the dark causing alarm and it isn't long before they try and make their way into the house. Luckily everyone manages to escape as the house burns down with the zombies inside it. As they continue walking they reach a fence where they see the zombies hanging on them as electricity passes through their bodies. And one of those is Brodsky, who was once their comrade. They shoot him in the head to end his suffering. Yon reveals the letter with a map on it as he shares it with the group, and they decide to investigate and find out what exactly is going on. As they follow the map, they reach one of the locations marked on it, and as they make their way inside, it looks like an abandoned church, where they find a young woman, Anna, who is the same woman from the opening scene of the film, where the German troops crashed the wedding and murdered everyone. But Anna survived with the help of her husband, who was killed. She explains how the Germans have been experimenting on the dead, turning them into zombies until they took it too far and ended up devouring each other, leaving Anna hiding behind in the church. Meanwhile, Jamie finds the papers which included the formula that was created by the Nazis, and he decides to make the political decision of leaving everyone but his men behind, and no one is happy about his decision. As he threatened to leave, he is mauled by a bunch of zombies who kill him in an instant. As the rest try and escape to an overground route, it is revealed that Anna too is a zombie and tries to kill them, but they can defeat her. The group manages to escape from the church, but Sister Floor locks herself inside, revealing to the sergeant that she had been bit and she must do what it takes to help them. Yon is keen to find an antidote, end the war and save his brother too. He plans to enter Las Aguilas to try and stop this from spreading and asks them to join them on this quest. And the sergeant has one request, that all his comrades survive. They begin their journey once again, but we see that the crews might have been bit, but the others are unaware aware of it. The plan that they must execute is simple. They get in, find the antidote and get out. The sun rises as they reach their location and Yon makes his way in, but his uncle refuses to let him in along with the soldiers and prisoners he claims to bring along with it. But his uncle is soon killed by the German general, who then takes charge on the whole situation. Meanwhile, de Cruz realizes that he has been bit and decides to sacrifice himself, despite Yon telling him that they will eventually find an antidote. As de Cruz makes his way in, he is killed within seconds, but soon rises as a zombie, helps blow up the entrance and assists his comrades in breaking in one last time. As they make their way in, so do plenty of the zombies, and we reach the climax of the film. It is a bloodbath, to say the least, with people dying all over, and you're unsure of who will make it out alive, and who will be eaten alive there is no telling. They realize there is no turning back at this point as Sergeant Yon and Priest Killer continue making their way to the lab. Sergeant makes his way to the train, hoping to get them escape as the other two make their way to the lab to find the antidote, where the German scientist, the same one who shot Yon's uncle, tells them that there is no antidote and that his work is immortal. Before he can transform into a zombie, Priest Killer shoots him. It isn't long after this that Yon is bitten by a zombie on his hand, and Priest Priest Killer does the only thing that can help him. She chops his hand off. Meanwhile, the zombies climb the train and infiltrate the lab, where Priest Killer and Yon share a passionate kiss before everything blows up. However, they survive as the train begins to move and manage to escape. They begin to part ways as she says she might cross over to France because there's nothing left for her here. But Yon tries to convince her to stay back and start a new life. However, she refuses and rides away, never revealing her real name. Do stick around for the end credit scene as it may potentially indicate a sequel.
Nazi zombies. Who would have seen that coming? Valley of the Dead is a recent war film. However, the crux of the film goes beyond just the Spanish Civil War. It begins with people being killed and because this is a war film, the theme of death and murder stays constant throughout the film. But the plot twists is what makes it all the more exciting. As the title hints at zombies, it is confirmed that the plot revolves around an experiment performed by the Germans, where they are essentially raising an army of zombies, killing everyone and anyone who stands in their way, trying to win the war. The second plot twist that comes way into the climax is that there is no antidote, and it truly feels like doomsday, no matter what Sister Floor has to say about that. While cinema from all over the world has often dabbled in the war genre and the undead zombie genre, there are only a few that have been known to combine these two. Mutations, ruthless experiments, serums and compounds created by Nazi Germany in films aren't a new concept. It takes place time and again in every single war film that has anything to even remotely do with Germany. However, as we focus on films with zombies and war, one of the first examples that come to mind is World War Z, where a former United Nations employee finds himself investigating a virus that turns humans into zombies. Or the 1977 film Shockwaves, where a group of tourists encounter aquatic Nazi zombies when they become shipwrecked, proving that this concept has been around for quite a while. But what separates Valley of the Dead from these films are certain elements that include camaraderie despite their political differences and an impending war, the togetherness of different religions to a zombie attack. And while the Germans are the main antagonist of the film, the focus remains off them for the majority of it, at least until the climax. This film tries to focus on the journey of discovering what these creatures are, while trying to put their differences aside to try and make it out alive. Maybe zombies in war films are the best way to try and get people from different sides to come work together, form an unlikely bond and truly understand who their enemy is. The zombie horror genre is growing every day, with directors coming up with new ways of trying to include them in films and make them even more ruthless. The war genre has also become a popular one, retelling tales that had once been buried away. So why not mix them? It could easily be a recipe for success. Yours or mine? Who cares? The one that's left after the shit. <laughs> The cast of The Valley of the Dead. Apart from the exciting plot twist and the zombies, the one thing that made this film a great watch was the cast. The entire cast embodied their characters perfectly and was able to execute the roles, making it a great watch. We begin with Jorn, played by Mickey Esparbe, a Spanish actor who is best known for his work in Off Course to China, The One-Eyed King and Cuerpo the Elite. He was the main protagonist of the film and easily the cockiest character that you will come across. From the get-go, we know he's a nice man, and his banter with De Cruz and other characters also makes him entertaining. Moving on to De Cruz, played by Manuel Lunel, who is best known for his work in La Pieta, is one of the most naive and innocent characters. However, his story arc is the best amongst all, as he is the reason why they managed to infiltrate the German lab. The cast also includes Ora Garrido, Maria Botto, Luis Scaleo, Jesus Carozza, Sergio Torrico, and Alvaro Cervantes, who work perfectly well together, making an almost undefeatable team. Spanish cinema has time and again proven its capability and match when it comes to Hollywood. And this cast doesn't hold back in trying to do it again and succeeding as they do so. And if you liked our content, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to us if you haven't already. Have a good one and be safe. Thanks everyone.